Good evening. Welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of April 11th, 2011. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will the Secretary please call roll? Commissioner Ferris? Here. Commissioner Price? Here. Commissioner Reynolds? Here. Commissioner Turpel? Here. Chair Fisher? Here. Uh, public comments. Uh, I don't have any speaker cards under public comments. I do have one for our uh, one and only case tonight. Uh, written comments, announcements, continuances. Mr. Town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have a supplemental packet for this evening's uh, meeting, which includes a copy of a city uh, ordinance, which was referenced in the staff report, and that is Ordinance 1503-NS. And so that was provided to all of the uh, commissioners this afternoon. That's all I had at this time. Thank you. Will the secretary please call case 6A. Hearing advertised as required by law is hereby open to consider agenda item 6A regarding case LU 20107031 and Z 20117038. Applicant 1200 Newberry LLC request one Consider addendum to adopted mitigated negative declaration number 257. Two, amend land use element designation from commercial and mobile home exclusive to medium density residential. And three, change zoning from TPD, trailer park development, and C2, yeah. highway and arterial commercial, to RPD 15U residential plan development up to 15 dwellings per acre. Location 1200 Newbury Road. Good evening, Mr. Spector. It's all yours. Good evening, uh, Chairman and members of the Planning Commission. Tonight we're here to consider an amendment to the land use element of the general plan and to the zoning for the property at uh, 1200 Newberry Road. The, uh, as far as the land use element, this change would uh, affect two designations. The mobile home park that's located on this property, Caneo Mobile Home Park, is designated mobile home exclusive on the land use element, and the frontage is designated commercial. And the change would be to take the entire property and designate it as medium density residential, <coughs> excuse me, which allows up to 15 dwellings per net acre. In addition to the general plan change, this would change the zoning for the property from trailer park development and highway and arterial commercial to residential plan development up to 15 dwellings per acre. This is an aerial view of, of the property. Um, it's apparent that the, the southern portion of the property contains uh, the mobile home park, Caneo Mobile Home Park. Uh, the northern, slightly less than an acre of this property, as I said before, is a commercial general plan land use element designation and C2 uh, highway and arterial commercial zoning. And this is an area that's uh, adjacent to Newberry Road at the entrance of the uh, mobile home park. The southern 3.4 acres is the area containing the mobile home park. It's designated mobile home exclusive. It has trailer park development zoning. And uh, I'll we'll mention the mobile home park in a minute. This uh, park has been the subject of quite a bit of controversy in the 
in the past, and uh, the result has been that the park has been approved for closure, and the tenants that are in the park today are scheduled to remain there through the end of June of this year. A number of tenants have already moved, but the majority will remain till uh, June 30th. I should point out that when this uh, closure was authorized by the city council uh, back uh, oh, a little, little more than a year ago, there was a condition of approval that required that the tenants of the park receive relocation assistance before the uh, park is converted to another use. And, the, and I understand that arrangements or agreements have been made with the, with, uh, the tenants prior to their uh, or dealing with the, the time that they move and the assistance that they receive. This is a, a map of the general plan land use element showing you the general pattern of the surrounding areas. It's uh, residential to the south. Uh, we have another mobile home, Elms Plaza, to the west and to the uh, east we have commercial. This is a map of the zoning designations of the property, the two designations for the parcel in question. As a matter of history for this uh, site, when the general plan was originally uh, adopted by the city council, it, the property, the entire property had a commercial general plan land use designation. And then in 2008, the designation was changed actually two times. The uh, initial change occurred the pro when the property was designated high density residential, up to 30 units per acre, and the purpose of which was to encourage future development if the park was con going to close for multiple family housing. Then there was a, um, a citizens group that put, got, gathered signatures for a ballot initiative, which was uh, ultimately adopted by the city council, and that changed the general plan designations to what we have today, mobile home exclusive and commercial. The zoning for this property did not change. Uh, um, before 2008, it was C2 and trailer park development. Now, as far as the, the change that uh, went from commercial to high density residential, I'll just uh, mention this was considered in the comparable zoning because the, it would help the city meet its RENA obligation that's uh, identified in the city's ha housing element. This is a uh, regional housing needs assessment um, obligation that uh, all cities have, uh, not the same amounts, but all cities have it. Yeah, and it's uh, basically an obligation that's specified in state law. Now the applicant at this time is asking for a medium density um, designation because he believes that, that medium density housing, specifically townhomes, is the best use for the site. And we had some discussions uh, early on w with the applicant uh, about the possible use of the property for high density housing or commercial uses. And uh, the applicant believes that uh, those, those uses are not feasible at this time. Now, as far as what the proposal, uh, the proposal that's before us tonight, staff believes that it's a reasonable um, proposal because the we have similar uses in terms of density to the west, east, and south of the property. There's already a sound wall along the freeway that protects the future residents from noise. We have mature landscaping adjacent to that sound wall. And uh, the use and density is compatible with with existing townhomes that uh, can be found to the south. Another issue that's of interest with this 
change has to do with Measure E. Measure E is an initiative that was passed in 1996 by the voters of the city. And uh, what it did was it, it placed a constraint on changes to the general plan. And that constraint says that uh, any changes that exceed the residential capacity that existed when that initiative passed in, on November 6, 1996, must be mat ratified by the voters. However, there have been a number of changes that have been approved since 1996 to the land use element of the general plan. And those changes have lowered the citywide dwelling unit capacity. So that left us with a, an existing credit of 391 uh, dwellings. Now it is a matter of the uh, accounting that we uh, apply to this. We have kept 114 of those 391 units in reserve uh, for Elms Plaza Mobile Home Park. This particular uh, change with respect to Measure E will increase the set citywide residential capacity by 64 units. And that's basically 15 units per acre times 4.28 acres. So the uh, cumulative residential capacity uh, of the general plan will not exceed the capacity that existed in 1996, and therefore a vote under Measure E is not required. We uh, also did uh, some environmental review pertaining to this uh, case, and we determined that an addendum to the mitigated negative declaration that was previously adopted, number 257, uh, would be appropriate. 257 was done, <coughs> excuse me, was prepared at the time that the general plan was changed to high density. So staff's recommend that, recommending that the Planning Commission recommend that the City Council uh, approve the uh, addendum to the mitigated ne negative declaration, which isn't on the slide, I'm sorry, and uh, approve the amendment to the general plan to uh, medium density residential and approve the zone change to residential plan development up to 15 units per acre. And that concludes my presentation and I'd be happy to answer questions that you might have. Question to staff. Commissioner Ferris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Speaker, I have a few questions uh, on this. Um, the, uh, you mentioned the regional uh, housing needs assessment. Uh, would, would the homes that are in the mobile, park, mobile home parks, does that count toward our uh, housing needs assessment? No, it doesn't. Not at all. Not at all. So we're in a. Are we in a situation with respect to planning that we have little incentive to keep mobile home parks in the city? Because well, they're really separate uh, issues because the arena is. Um, it's intended to encourage cities to rezone property at higher densities, but it's silent as to existing. Uh, mobile home parks or, or existing housing. They, they just don't count. The existing units don't count. I guess in some ways that is the question I'm asking. Is it, it seems to me that there might be an incentive for us to take things that don't count and increase the density on them to make them count toward the, the arena. And maybe, maybe there's nothing we can do about that, but the, I appreciate you uh, clarifying my understanding on that. Um, with respect to, you mentioned that the Elms Plaza Mobile Home Park, that those units are held in reserve. With res Can you describe what that, that means? Well, part of the Mobile Home Park initiative was to uh, rezone that property, which was um, along with Caneo Mobile Home Park was rezoned to high density housing. So when that was uh, redesignated, if you will, to mobile home exclusive, we thought the appropriate accounting practice was to um, uh, have something that that property uh, could revert to in the case of, in the event of a, of a closure. 
because we couldn't have uh, a, a, a situation where a property owner has no choices. I guess what does it what does it mean though to be in reserve? There's 114. Does it mean that there are 114 units more that can be that can be approved without going to the vote of the people, or that there's 114 less? Well, there's 114 less than the 391. Okay. Or the 327 so, after this change. So of the three, if this changes of the 327, there's 114 that are really kind of off limits. That's the way we we think it would be a proper accounting of this. Okay. But uh, there there could be other uh, approaches. Okay, and that that helps me out. Um, I did have one question on the um, the MND that uh, was was presented, which is I believe the original one that was approved. I got page thirty three of the um, staff report under the section population and housing uh, section C. Uh, it it looks into the assessment of the zone change back prior to uh, there being an actual closing of the of the mobile home park and prior to any any uh, ordinance change is there anything that needs to be changed in the evaluation there because that seems to be a uh, an analysis based upon the, the previous situation You're talking about just uh, uh, displacing existing housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, may, maybe the uh, impact is, is would be no impact uh, if at the point that the park is empty, but there are still mobile homes in the park, so it's it's not a significant difference today than it was then as far as displacement. Is there anything we need to do with the document, or is that just part of part of what we're here? Um, I, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I guess one last question might be potentially for the city attorney uh, with respect to the ordinance that, that uh, uh, took on the general plan designations and zoning changes. It also talks about that, that uh, any, any designation. It seemed to me in reading the ordinance that the intent of it was to ensure that they stay those designations unless if there's a closure that there are payments that are made to the tenants and I I don't know there, there was a, a a little bit that was referred to in the staff report but I don't really know much about the history I guess the question would be why why isn't this being recommended and, and evaluated with respect to going to a vote of the people like it was with measure E or at least an analysis of that uh, well in this case because of the closure that was approved by council last year um, one of the conditions in that um, approval was that they need to pay the relocation costs for those who will be displaced, which will be everybody eventually. The way the ordinance reads and the way the um, condition reads is they are not allowed to change their use unless those mitigation measures are paid. The way the ordinance reads is if that happens, if everyone is paid, then you don't need to go to a vote to the, of the people. And so one thing, one condition or one recommendation um, for this project, especially at the council level here, it's just an um, advisory to council, um, would be that it wouldn't become effective until all of those um, payments are made. Um, my understanding is that most of those have already occurred. There may be a few, but um, as staff, we would want to make sure that everyone has been paid before those changes, assuming council votes affirmative, um, occurs. I hope that answers your question. Uh, I believe so. I guess I, this is a recommendation, obviously, so the whole thing goes to council. And, but they will receive that information uh, about this at the time that they would choose to enact it? Correct. Okay. All right, thanks. That's all I have for now. Other questions? Um, I have just one, Mr. Spector. Uh, going back to the Planning Commission meeting when we discussed uh, this particular project, it was, if I remember right, it was portrayed that, yes, we're losing, you know, these mobile home residences, but we're gaining a high-density project. Um, and now the recommendation is that it's medium density, 
based on uh, the applicant's view of the project and whether or not it's financially uh, viable. Um, do you agree with that? Uh, well, obviously you do, uh, but was any research done into what the viability would be of a higher density project? Well, it's really just anecdotal that uh, we've had discussions with a number of um, potential developers of multiple family housing, not necessarily on this site, but I know there have been discussions with others. Uh, and and they've, without, uh, I'm not aware of anyone has indicated that the market is such that it's viable to build um, the higher density housing at this time, multiple, fa you know, rental apartments at this time. Um, I guess that's just the way the market happens to be today. Maybe a number of years ago it was better, or maybe, you know, 10 years from now it might be uh, different, but that's that's the, the situation. We have property owners that have high density zoning and developers that have built apartments, but they choose not to because the economics aren't there. The cost is, uh, versus the return is just not there for them. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um, Commissioner Turpel. Uh, good evening, Mr. Spector. Um, I had a, a couple of questions based on, on what you were just saying, and, and if I understand it correctly, the um, uh, in dealing with the, the HDR, the high density residential, we still have other areas uh, within the city that potentially we'd be able to uh, meet our arena requ requirements with the state. Is that correct? We have a property in mind to help us uh, meet those requirements. Um, back at the time that this property was zoned high density residential, shortly thereafter we, we re rezoned a number of other properties. We still have a, a shortfall, but we have a, a property in mind that's uh, on Caneo Center Drive that the city owns and I imagine staff that's a balancing act taking a look at what's going on in the city to make that happen yeah this really is a balancing act um, the only other question I have is we've been talking about the the mobile home park but and in the packet it talks about Acres Tavern this is going to be a part of the zoning change as well yes okay that's it other questions Commissioner Reynolds so what happens if we change the zoning for Acres Tavern? What happens to that property? I mean, can they maintain? Well, you can refer this to the applicant, but all along my understanding was that uh, when the time comes that the uh, tavern would would close when the property redevelops. Mm, okay, thank mm. you. Any other questions? Okay, I don't have any... Um, public speaker cards. Uh, so we'll we go ahead to the applicant, uh, Joe Bednar. Mr. Bednar, please state your name, city of residence, and you'll have 15 minutes. Hi, my name is Joseph Bednar. I reside in Agoura Hills, California. Good evening, commissioners, city attorney, planning director, vice chair Reynolds, chair Fisher. Uh, I agree with staff and the recommendations and the review that we've just went through. Um, you know, I'd like to make myself available for questions, but uh, there isn't a whole lot for me to discuss. It's, it's pretty much in the report, and uh, I agree with all of the recommendations, and I'm ready to go forward with this project. Questions of the applicant? Commissioner Ferris. Thank you. Um, as I had some questions about the, the mobile home ordinance that, that we had referred to, there's a, a condition here that uh, if that, that any change would have to go and be approved by the voters unless uh, payments in accordance with the ordinance is made with, with the tenants. Is, is it my assumption that that's your intention to fulfill the, the requirements of the ordinance so that it does not go to the vote of the people? That is definitely my intentions, and we're well underway of, of taking care of all of those payments. It's going very, very well. Okay. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bednar. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to uh, staff for any additional comments. I have no other comments. Thank you. Okay. We did receive uh, one letter from uh, Janet Wall uh, recommending that we postpone uh, this decision until um, the park closes on June 30th. Uh, no other correspondence. Uh, any questions of staff? Okay. We'll close the public hearing or go back to uh, Mr. Bednar. You do have an opportunity for a rebuttal as part of the process. I'm assuming nothing else. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Close the public hearing. Open. Uh, Mission comments and or a motion. Commissioner Reynolds. I was waiting for one of the new commissioners if you'd rather start. Okay, then I, I'll go I, ahead. I, go ahead. Um, this has really been a difficult case, even though I did vote for the closure, I, the thought of displacing people, but I really believe in personal prop property rights and that this property owner does have the right to do this. I was hoping, though, that when it would be rezoned, that some of the people that did live in the mobile home on this site would be able to live in apartments or in high-density housing on this site, and I don't see that happening. Um, as I said, I really would prefer the high density, but this is just a recommendation to the City Council. And with that, I will move approval or a recommendation to the City Council of LU 2010-70131 and the zone change Z2011-70038, uh, with the addendum to the MND 257 and, uh, with the, um, findings and evaluation as stated in the packet. Comments to the motion? Commissioner Price? Thank you. Yeah, I, I watched with uh, great interest all of the proceedings in regards to this property, and uh, I, I think uh, I, I share similar sentiments. Um, nobody likes to see people displaced. Uh, however, uh, the owner of the property does have certain rights. Um, and he is meeting his obligations under the law that was enacted here in, in 2008. And uh, while I too would would uh, would like to see this get some affordable housing units out of that property, um, that that doesn't seem to be the way uh, that the developer wants to go. So uh, under this ec economic climate, so I would uh, uh, be in support of the motion as well. Commissioner Ferris. Thank you. Um, actually, I was wondering if uh, uh, Vice Chair Reynolds would be kind enough to consider a, an amendment to it, which would also uh, be a recommendation that uh, no approval of this general general plan or zoning amendment uh, take place until verification that a payment schedule has been made to the tenants in accordance with the ordinance. Otherwise, that it goes to a vote of the people. I think that's already in the ordinance, and our city council has to follow that, unless Mr. Um, uh, th that type of amendment would be appropriate. Pardon? That type of amendment would okay. be appropriate. Okay, then I will accept it as a friendly amendment. Thank you, and with that inclusion, I, I will support it, given the stated intentions of the applicant, and the in, it will have it followed the intention of the ordinance. Thanks. Commissioner Terpel. Yeah, I wanted to say the, um, of course, all these things are, are, are difficult to go through, but I think the, uh, the applicant has showed extremely good faith, and I, too, believe in personal property rights. And I always believe, you know, is, although change is hard sometimes, I think it's very good for the city as we move into the 21st century to, to take some of these areas and do some different things with them. So I'm in support of the motion as well. Great. Um, I am as well uh, with the amendment. Um, I think that's a great idea to add this as a recommendation to the council. So with that, vote please. Motion passed, 5-0. Since this is a recommendation to the city council, there is no appeal period. 
Uh, item seven, community development department reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to uh, bring to the commission's attention on page 75 of your packet is the tentative hearing agenda schedule. We do have two cases and one, um, one CIP review uh, case that will be coming before you on May 9th. So we will not be meeting on April 25th, but do uh, keep May 9th on your calendars, please. Okay, minutes of March 28th. Commissioner Reynolds. I move approval of the minutes of March 28, 2011. Vote, please. Motion passed, 5 0. AB 1234 reports. No reports. Commission comments? Commissioner Ferris? Yeah, uh, even though we did come to unanimity on the previous case regarding the mobile home parks, uh, I just I, I do have a, a concern about the long-term potential effects of these. The ordinance did, at least in my, my mind in reading it and what it seemed to intend to do was to try to really preserve the presence of mobile home parks and allowing for some means of affordable uh, housing for these residents in the city. And I, I would not want to see this particular case become the model by which other property owners start to close down parks and seek to up-develop them. Um, I don't know what we can do beyond that except to potentially just raise the issue and, and make it something that we ought to, ought to heighten our awareness to. Any thoughts on, on your, your... Any other comments? Commissioner Price? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't disagree with that. I think it, uh, it, it is clearly a, a more affordable housing uh, option for many uh, families here. Um, but again, uh, as in this case, uh, the property rights of that owner, I think, uh, um, are, are important to, to recognize as well. But I, I am in agreement that uh, I certainly don't want to see any of the other um, uh, mobile home parks closing. And uh, to the extent that we can uh, uh, dissuade them from doing so, I, I, I think that as a city, that's probably a good practice. Commissioner Trippell. Yeah, um, Commissioner Ferris, I, you know, I uh, understand those comments well, but I think that's what's interesting or what's nice about the city that we live in and why those ordinances were put in place, because any change that's going to happen in the future, and correct me if I'm wrong, a city attorney, that it has to come before us and then go to the council. So all those checks and balances are there to make sure that the, uh, the process is followed through. Those are my comments. Commissioner Reynolds. And I also agree, I would hate to lose any of the housing, but I you know this last year has been a difficult year because we had, let's say, the Vallecito and with them wanting to, uh, the owner of the property, sell it to the people that uh, had their coaches on the property. And also with the closing of this and the rent increases, I think that the mobile home people have really been hit hard. And it's the seniors in our community and while we're I think good to our seniors, we have to always put them, and I'm one of them now, so we always have to put them in the forefront that we have to provide housing. And I know there weren't only seniors in this park, there were families too, that uh, I think we have to keep in mind that we have to do what we can to keep our mobile home parks. And I agree with all the comments made. Um, we are in very tough times and anything we can do to preserve um, what we have now with the remaining mobile home parks is going to be very important, so it's good to keep on our radar. So with that, we will adjourn to 6.30 p.m. on May 9th, 2011.